Tonight's talk is about letting go of the sacred word and the sacred breath. So we'll have a little review of the, the sacred word and the sacred breath and just talk about ways of letting go of them during the practice. So let's start with a song. You, O oh my God, are my shepherd. I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me down right pathways in your name. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people. Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you are new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You're also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering, recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here today. If anyone would like to mention silently or aloud, expressions of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, or our fragile planet, please do so now. And don't forget to unmute yourself. Or Haley. For the leaders of our country, for Nick's healing and for Wayne too, that he continue to be healed. For all my grandchildren. For Lindsay. For Kevin and Ellen, who are still looking for jobs in a difficult economy. For the beauty of this day. For Doug, Cindy, and Diane, prayers of healing and strength. God, we trust that you hear our prayers silent or spoken, wordless or in words. So tonight's theme is letting go of the sacred word and the sacred breath. How do you make centering prayer simple and effortless? How do you make 
just the smallest motion when you're disengaging from your thoughts. The way that you use your sacred symbol, your sacred word, or your sacred breath can help you to become ever more gentle in your practice. Last week we looked at how not to torture yourself physically in your posture and this week we'll think about how to not torture yourself mentally to be kind to yourself by allowing your centering prayer to be gentle and flowing. How can you make your centering prayer less emotionally judgmental? How can you be completely at ease in your practice and in your relationship with God? So the first question about that is which is more simple and effortless for you, the sacred word or the sacred breath? Centering prayer is usually taught with the sacred word, but my own teacher, David Frenette, who wrote The Path of Centering Prayer, also teaches on the sacred breath and even on the sacred glance and the sacred nothingness, but I'm not going to be talking about those other ones today, but if you're interested in them, that there are chapters on them in his book, The Path of Centering Prayer. But I'm just going to do a quick review of the sacred word and the sacred breath. And if you're not familiar with the sacred breath, you might want to just give it a try tonight just to see what it feels like. There neither is better or more advanced or anything that any, there's no real, I don't strongly advise you towards one or the other. It's just a matter of personal preference and it might have to do with where you are on your journey and in your practice, which one suits you the best. So the basic instruction on the sacred word is to choose a sacred word as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within. And we choose a simple word of one or two syllables as, re as recommended in the Christian classic, the cloud of unknowing. And examples might be God, Jesus, Amen, love, peace. We choose a word that's neutral rather than charged with emotion so that we won't be distracted by the word so that it won't elicit a lot of thoughts when we use it. And we silently say it whenever we find that we're engaged with our thoughts. But we don't repeat it over and over again like a mantra. We just touch it very gently with our attention when we need to disengage ourselves from thoughts that have taken that are taking too much of our attention and the word is sacred not because of its meaning but just because of the way we use it you could use any word it doesn't need to be a religious word it's just a tool in our practice that we use as a symbol of our intention and our way of saying yes to God our way of surrendering now the sacred breath is mentioned in Thomas Keating's classic work, Open Mind, Open Heart, but he doesn't really tell you how to do it. He just, he has one or two sentences about it um, that he says that it's a, it's a good alternative to the sacred word, but he doesn't really instruct you on how to use it. But David, who studied with, with Thomas Keating for many, many years, really unpacks the sacred breath in his book and he does a whole chapter on it and looks at, looks at it very carefully. So if you feel drawn to the sacred breath, I recommend that you look at David's book, The Path of Centering Prayer. So if you choose a sacred breath as the symbol of your intention to consent to God's presence and action within, you, you don't follow the breath with your attention as, as in certain Eastern forms of meditation. You just notice the breath and touch it ever so gently with your attention when you notice that you're engaged with thoughts without following your breath, without changing it in any way. So you're using it very much the same way that you would use the sacred word, just touching it gently with your intention to, to uh, disengage yourself. 
but it's a more kinetic, embodied way of doing the prayer. If you, if you feel that the word is a little too thinky, it elicits too many thoughts in you, or it starts to feel kind of harsh, um, the sacred breath might be drawing you towards it. Um, so I invite you to just play around with it. Some, some people find that it's a more simple, natural, em embodied symbol of God's presence in us, but other people find the word more anchoring or they've always used it and they don't feel any inclination to change and there's no there's no reason to change but part of the reason I like to teach the sacred breath is that some people find that the word just falls away naturally in their practice that and especially people who've been practicing for a long time that the word just doesn't really seem necessary anymore and what they're doing starts to be more like the practice of the sacred breath just naturally. So part of the reason I like to mention it is if that's kind of happening to you, that you're just kind of evolving naturally to just touching a place in your body where your breath is with your attention to let go of your thoughts rather than using a word. I just think it's helpful for, pe for people to know that they're not doing anything wrong. That's a recognized way of practicing centering prayer. And that can be empowering and helpful for people to know that. Now, David in his book, The Path of Centering Prayer, talks a little bit about letting go of the sacred word. And he uses this sentence, which I think is very helpful. Let the sacred word become a whisper, a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen voice. I think that's a very beautiful description of how we use the sacred word. I'll just read it one more time. Letting go of the sacred word. Let the sacred word become a whisper a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen voice. I think that sense has a very good feeling of the gentleness of the practice and the kind of movement, the inner movement that we make when we use the sacred word in just the faintest, most whispering, most gentle way that we can. And for our Lexio tonight, I'm going to read the whole paragraph from which that sentence is taken, so that will come back to you in context after our practice. And then in talking about letting go of the sacred breath, David says this, in deepening the sacred breath in centering prayer, when you are aware of thoughts, you notice your breathing. The breath becomes a receptive open window through which you can more easily receive God. Yet in the deepening movements of this practice, you let go of the sacred breath itself and are just in God. So I think those two descriptions of David's give a, a very good sense of how we use the sacred word or the sacred breath as a tool to disengage our, ourselves from our thoughts. But then it's almost as if the symbol kind of evaporates. We've used it. And then it, we don't need it. We've used it to disengage from our thoughts. And then it, it becomes transparent and falls away because we don't need it anymore in a kind of a mysterious way that's, that's hard to describe but that you learn to become familiar with through your practice. And I've been thinking about this lately partly because I've been having some experiences of a kind of a change in my, in my operating system. Sometimes during my day, during my work, I feel as if a kind of a veil is being drawn over my mind. And a deeper part of me, the, the voice of a deeper part of me gets louder. And that part of me, that deeper part of me doesn't speak in words, it's a kind of a wordless 
knowing. A, f a few days ago, I had an experience where I, there was a project that I was thinking of inviting a friend to work on with me. And I hadn't quite decided, I was very excited about inviting her, but I, I hadn't quite decided yet. I just thought, I'll give it a few days just to make sure. And then I suddenly found that I was writing her the invitation. I hadn't decided with my mind, but some more deeper, more intuitive part of me had just gone ahead and started writing this email. And I think that that is very related to this process in, um, in Centering Prayer of, of shifting our attention just very gently from the mind, which doesn't, it doesn't give up, it, it keeps fussing and, you know, it keeps fussing and wanting to interrupt us and invite, in this case of this email I was sending to my friend, it was saying, don't, it was saying, don't you want to think about this more carefully, just in case you're something, there's something that you forgot about, and the deeper self said, no, I don't need to do that, and it just went ahead and wrote the email. And I think that's very similar to what happens to us in Centering Prayer. We get, we're so used to following our mind and paying attention to it and giving a great deal of value to our thoughts. And our thoughts can be very useful at the right time, used in the right way. The th kind of thinking that we do in words in our ordinary mind, that's, that has its place. But if we learn how to not let it hijack our minds, if we, if we learn how to kind of step back from that very gently and let the thinking mind be more in balance with the other parts of us, which get kind of the voice of the other parts of us can get a little bit louder, almost like the roaring of the sea or something and just the thoughts are still there, but maybe they're being kind of gently drowned out by the roaring of the sea, which gets more of a roll. I don't know if that image is helpful or not. I think maybe I got a bit confused there, but I'm just trying to give the feeling of that process of you notice you're engaged with thoughts and you just ever so gently shift your attention using your sacred symbol. And then it just dissolves and leaves you in this very gentle, wordless place where you can be very effortless and at ease until the next time you notice when you're engaged with thoughts. So let's turn to our practice, our 20 minutes of centering prayer. I invite you to sit with your back straight and your feet flat on the ground or in another stable position. Your hands on your thighs or in your lap. And gently close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. And just notice if there are any adjustments you'd like to make to be comfortable for the prayer period. Is your head and shoulders roughly over your hips? Are your legs and arms stable and comfortable? Alert but not rigid? Is there any tension in your neck or shoulders or jaw that you'd like to let go of? before you begin. Give yourself a little wiggle or a shake if you need to. Would you like to adjust the angle of your chin a little bit to ease the pressure on your neck or let your jaw kind of hang down for a moment to release the pressure there? Just do whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable and stable, natural, at ease. And then take a moment to notice who God is for you right now, whatever that might mean, whether it's a sense of mystery, gratitude, community, 
justice, mercy, darkness, absence, aliveness, whatever you feel is most alive for you in your relationship with God right now, just renew your commitment to be open and present to the divine. And if you like, you can silently begin to repeat your sacred word or touch your breath ever so gently with your attention, using your symbol to orient yourself towards God. And during the prayer period, whenever you notice that you've become engaged with your thoughts, just gently disengage yourself using your word or your breath just touching them ever so gently with your attention and then letting them dissolve. I'll read David's sentence again. Let the sacred word become a whisper, a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen breath. Or, if you're using the sacred breath, let the breath become a receptive open window through which you can more easily receive God.
So for our Lexio tonight, I'm going to read that passage I was reading a sentence from before, from David's work, um, and the, it's from a section in his book called Letting Go of the Sacred Word. And I'll read it three times, and then I'll invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated for you from the passage. Listen with the ear of the heart. As your centering prayer unfolds, you find that thoughts flow through your mind more easily. You try less. Then, as if you were in a dance and attuned to your partner's subtle guidance, you can allow another movement of the practice to unfold in you as you let the external form of the sacred word go. Let the sacred word become a whisper, a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen voice. Letting go of the surface form of the sacred word is a way of surrendering into the living word of God behind and beneath and within the outer shell of the sacred word. Love is not primarily an emotion. In spiritual practice, love is an act of the will, a consent, a willingness, a letting go. If you hang on to the sacred word when God is inviting you into wordless love, you are left only with yourself. If you let God let go of the sacred word in you, you receive divine love. As your centering prayer unfolds, you find that thoughts flow through your mind more easily. You try less. Then, as if you were in a dance and attuned to your partner's subtle guidance, you can allow another movement of the practice to unfold in you as you let the external form of the sacred word go. Let the sacred word become a whisper, a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen voice. Letting go of the surface form of the sacred word is a way of surrendering into the living word of God behind and beneath and within the outer shell of the sacred word. 
Love is not primarily an emotion. In spiritual practice, love is an act of the will, a consent, a willingness, a letting go. If you hang on to the sacred word, when God is inviting you into wordless love, you are left only with yourself. If you let God let go of the word in you, you receive divine love. As your centering prayer unfolds, you find that thoughts flow through your mind more easily. You try less. Then, as if you were in a dance and attuned to your partner's subtle guidance, you can allow another movement of the practice to unfold in you as you let the external form of the sacred word go. Let the sacred word become a whisper, a memory, a receding echo spoken by an unseen voice. Letting go of the surface form of the sacred word is a way of surrendering into the living word of God behind and beneath and within the outer shell of the sacred word. Love is not primarily an emotion. In spiritual practice, love is an act of the will, a consent, a willingness, a letting go. If you hang on to the sacred word when God is inviting you into wordless love, you are left only with yourself. If you let God let go of the word in you, you receive divine love. I invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated for you. Divine love. Wordless. Subtle. Surrendering. Subtle guidance. Willingness to let go. Wordless love. Wordless love. A whisper. Let God let go of the word. Try less. 
Surrender into living word of God. Let's close by saying together the prayer of Jesus. Um, you can leave yourself on mute and we'll say it together. Ground of all being, mother of life, father of the universe, your name is sacred, beyond speaking. May we know your presence. May your longings be our longings in heart and in action. May there be food for the human family today and for the whole earth community. Forgive us the falseness of what we have done as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our time of conflict, but lead us into new beginnings. For the light of life, the vitality of life, and the glory of life are yours now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here tonight. I hope you, you have a wonderful week. Thank you, Lindsay. Bless Thank you. you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.